Having decided how steep his ramp should be, Guy's meeting an old friend at Trinity College, Cambridge, to learn about the science behind jumping motorbikes. That's a tennis ball launcher. All right. Professor Hugh Hunt is a specialist in applied mechanics and was key in planning Guy's record-breaking ride on the wall of death. I can say to Guy, this is how fast you have to go, this is what you've got to do. He said, oh, good, all right, I'll do it then. He hasn't just broken the record, he's absolutely smashed it. He wants. Yeah. Hugh just backs up whatever I'm doing or whatever I'm going to attempting to do with maths, and you can't argue with the maths and the physics, you can't argue with them. I've got to jump about eight foot high for about 50 feet. Andy Retton's about 23 degrees, so the jump he's built okay. at mine is about 23 degrees. But the reason you choose 23 degrees is nothing to do with what you could achieve. I mean, the steeper, the better. Yeah, but then you need more skill, which yeah. I haven't got yeah. a lot so of. So look, I'll show you, show you what I mean. Yeah. Oh. oh, bloody hell. The best angle is 45 degrees. OK. So if I go too straight, then I have to throw it really fast yeah. to yeah. get it to you, right? Whereas if I want to go not too fast, 45 degrees is the best. There we go. A 45 degree takeoff angle is best for distance, but it would mean a 45 degree landing angle, and that's too steep to land safely. A lower 23 degree takeoff angle requires a higher takeoff speed, but will mean an easier landing. What speed do I need to be hitting? Eight foot in height, 96 inches, which are 2.4 meters. Bloody hell, man, all them formulas and bloody equations and all. Your speed squared... Divide by G, gravity. Yeah, fries my brain. You've got to multiply by sine to sine squared. I know there was a formula. This bit here and this bit here... I'm not going to try and bluff my way through that. 39 points, 40 miles an hour. 40 miles an hour, yeah, we do that. We do that. That's Rather not bother. than me. The next thing we did then was to get a whole lot of tennis balls and put them into a tennis ball launching machine. OK, so we're going to launch the balls up over to you. Once you've caught the ball, drop the ball and just keep your hand in the same position. Right. OK. We'll see how repeatable this is. Yeah. What happens when you go from the lovely, simple equations for a tennis ball in a vacuum? Coming on now. That works in a vacuum, but we don't live in a vacuum. And the idea of this tennis ball launching machine... Right, I've got it. First one. ...is that it repeatedly fires out tennis balls at the same speed, the same angle. Nearly. And that's where the real world comes in. Guy would catch the ball like this, but then the next ball would go over here and the next one over there and the next one down here. Short. But look at the spread of where the balls are landing. Big difference. I think I caught two out of ten or something like that. Nearly in the nuts there. That just showed how much, a bit of breeze in any direction, how much of an effect it has. It's sometimes high, sometimes low, yeah, sometimes Yeah, yeah, a fair variation. Because of a little bit of wind or variability, the things are not repeatable. So you're aiming for eight feet. Mm-hmm. You're probably, given that there's going to be variation... OK. Maybe you need to aim for eight and a half, Yeah. Nine. Tolerance. You need tolerance, that's to the yes. word. You need a little bit of wiggle room. Even more variables are added when you move from a tennis ball to a bike. So we thought, right, well, let's ride his push bike over a ramp. Off you go. It's not really by design for doing that, but, yeah, I had a go. I would have stand back a bit. <laughs> Aim straight. When the front wheel goes off the ramp, the back wheel is still on the ramp. So there's a tendency for the bike to tip forwards. He doesn't want to take off and then come down nose heavy. We've got to figure out how to get the angle of your bike right so that when you come down on the other side, yeah. you're landing safely. Yeah. Luckily, if you have wheels, science has a solution. It's this wonderful thing, conservation of angular momentum. It's, it's a lot of big words, but it basically means once you've got something spinning in space, you can't unspin it. So I've got this swivelly platform which I can stand on. Nice. But the idea is that I can stand on here and it's um, no friction. And I've got a bike wheel on a handle. If I get this wheel going like this... Now, if I stop the wheel, 
I start to turn around. How tricks that? Because it's transferring the angular momentum of the wheel yeah. into me. Every action has an equal and opposite Every, reaction. That's the one. Yeah. Tip the whole thing sideways. That's exactly what's going on on the bike. So what's happening when yeah. you're in mid-air? This I stop wheel the back wheel with a back brake. You stop the wheel. And the bike tries to turn around. That's it. You can speed the wheels up or slow them down to control the, the angle. So we thought, now what can we do to demonstrate this? Oh! -ho! Radio control cab. What the hell, that was fast. He was whizzing around on this high speed buggy and going over this ramp. Hey! What he was doing was taking off the ramp and then really whizzing up the throttle, and the buggy would do a backflip. If you kept the throttle on, it would just try and wheelie as soon as it took off the jump. OK, so once it jumps, he's off. Let off the throttle. And that'll help you go nose down. Right. That now, was about... That was good. But do you notice that it, as it went up, it went a little bit nose down? Yes. But you sped up a bit and it came nose up again because he put the throttle on. Just amazing how much Guy really got the message on that. He could figure out how to control the angle of the buggy. It's a gut feel thing for him. That is fairly sensitive, that. It yeah. is, but that's what's going to happen to you when you're, when you're on your jump. Whether that'll make for me being a better rider, I don't know. Time will tell. Time will tell.